Hi guys, today we will talk about uh, the DAC, which is an important block in the signal, uh, in the, the signal processing and in the, in the signal chain conditioning. So let's revise the chain a bit. So you have the analog, so you have an analog signal, which goes through a conditioning first. Let's, let's see, let it call the conditioning, OBAMP conditioning. Then you use a low pass filter. And you can even have more than one signal. So you have analog two, analog, analog signal one, and so on, which goes into the into a multiplexer, which has a selector. Let it let it call selector. After this, you have to be sure that this signal is kept constant for the sampling. So you have the sampling and hold circuit. Once the the circuit has been uh, that once the, you know that the your signal has been uh, sampled effectively you can you can you can use this fed to the adc so now you enter into the into the digital domain you can have one zero one one as an output and so you have to use the duck to reconstruct the signal otherwise you have just the <laughs> some digital number and then you have to put also the another low pass filter and at the end of the story you can you have to put also the conditioning remember that the the sampling frequency fs must be higher two times than the um, so you have to uh, two times than the um, the, the, the bandwidth of the signal. So you have to write uh, that the sampling frequency is higher than two times BF. Otherwise uh, you have uh, uh, multiple, uh, you have multiple images in, in the spectra. So the, the harmonics, the multiple harmonics are a two pi over FS. If you don't respect this theorem here, these images with this the, this spectrum here will overlap basically and you will have the so-called aliasing error so this is the so this is the spectrum and you will have you, you will have the um the the aliasing error uh, you know that so in this video i will cover just this the duck because the DAC is then used also for the ADC. So let's start with the so let's start with the, the DAC. So this is a, this is the characteristic of, of the DAC. And you have in the x-axis you have the digital number 000, 001 and so on. And in the y-axis you have the analog output voltage. As you may know, the DAC has a lot of errors. This is the differential linearity error. As you may see, the increment is not the same as in the step before. Then you have also another example of the of a differ of differential linearity error. Then you have also the some other problems of uh, let me just uh, let me just write them for you. The first is the offset error. The second is gain error. Third is integral nonlinear error. The fourth is differential nonlinearity error. Uh, uh, non monotonous error. So, long story short, the offset error is basically when you you put zero, you put the input voltage to zero and the output voltage is for instance 10 millivolt this is the offset error the gain error you you design a gain equal to one but in reality you have a gain equal to 1.2 and you can see this maybe in the you can see this in the in the slope of the curve the these error here are, are shown here and the non-monotonous error, it means that in, in your curve, the, the monotony of a function is that when 
is that the, for instance the function is always a crescent is always increasing but no monotonous, no monotonous error it means that sometimes you have a decreasing area like this so let's just see that the duck has a lot of problems I will just show you the simplest and the most used circuit which is the R2R circuit R2R ladder the R2R ladder starts from a very simple concept you take the current I with a resistor R then you split the, the current I between a parallel between a, a series of 2R and 2R nothing has changed from stage 1 to stage 2 now let's go to stage 3 I take the resistor 2R this resistor here to be precise and I split between a parallel of, of R and R so the current I is entering here and now it is splitting in the black branch of I over 2 and I over 2 if you associate the current with information I'm splitting the information between two branches and now I can repeat this process forever because now I'm, I'm, I'm returning in the stage 1 in which I have just a resistor R and so I can split the resistor R with a parallel of 2R and repeat the process the circuit which I present here is just made with a reference voltage Vref and a branch of 2R R 2R R and so on until you close it with double 2R and the last is grounded all of this must be inserted into the transient into the trans, trans impedance amplifier which converts the current I to voltage V and so you will need just a circuit like this let's revise a bit what this op amp does if you have a, a current I as an input the output voltage of this circuit will be V of of V equal to minus R times I let me call this RF and let me call this F so now we have everything the last thing to do is to open a lattice bias and to put just a voltage here let me put just 10 volts and let me use uh, the resistor R the combination of R and 2R This is 2 times R and this is just R. Ah, sorry, I forgot to write the equation of this. Um, the equation of this is V equal to minus reference voltage VR times uh, times it depends on how much branches you are feeding for each branch you are feeding I will put one okay so VR times RF over 2 to the N D uh, okay now let me re replicate this ah oh, sorry uh, the higher the number of the bit uh, the more precise the circuit will be so let me use uh, A lot of bits and uh, I will put one for each branch I will connect to the op-amp 
one, one. Let, let's connect everything to the op amp. So I will expect a voltage very near to the input one. So this is the amps B. The most significant bit. And this is the LSB. So let's use the op amp. Uh, let's let's use this op amp here. And uh, let's put. Uh, this is this will be a reference voltage, and this is would be our supply. So let me put V plus. And the same for V minus. Now, because the, the, the now because the output of this uh, circuit is inverted, you have to put uh, another inverting stage. Otherwise, you have the uh, the negative output, which is something that you don't want. So let me put another op amp like this, and let me put an inverting stage. So this will be my output. Out. Okay, so now we are feeding everything. Ah, sorry, the LSB is this one, by the way. So now we are, we are, we are feeding everything and we expect the voltage to be at very close to the input voltage. Let me run the simulation for just 10 milliseconds because I don't need... Oh, sorry, I didn't define the model R, so dot param R equal to 2.2 kilo ohm and we are good to go. Let's run. Ah, sorry, I... <laughs> I forgot the, to put the voltages. Let's put 15 volts and minus 15 volts. Hope that this time I didn't forget anything. Let me put something like this, by the way, because we don't need so much space. Let me run the simulation. Um, let me just lower the, let me just put one volt, just for starters. And let me check that everything is good. It, it should be arch war, arch war, arch war, arch war. Yes, it should be quite good. Uh, Uh, let me put uh, the, the universal op amp 2 just because I want to just to make an an ideal simulation so with one volt as you as, as you can see I have uh, 1992 millivolts so very close to the input voltage now let's put for instance 5 volts and I have 4.96 volts uh, what happens if uh, I I cut these branches here and uh, I reduce the number of bits uh, like this, for instance. The answer is very simple. The circuit is going to be less precise than before, and so you are gonna have um, not 4.9, but for instance 4.5, uh, 4.6. Exactly. So the thing is, with 4 bits, so with 111 and 4 bits, we have 4.64. 4.68 let me put the result here which is not very close to the input voltage as you can see 
But if I put instead, like before, 8 bits. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7 bits. With 7 bits, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 7 bits, we have 4.95, 94, something like that. 96. So the higher the number of the bits, as you can see, and the higher the number will be equal to the input. Of course, I'm placing all, all one because uh, I am sure I am positive that the number must be five. Okay, but uh, you can al al always put uh, this to ground and this will be a zero. But uh, I don't have neither the time and neither the willingness to convert this number into what we need. So naturally, if we put zero here, the voltage will change, but this is not the scope of of this simulation so now now let's verify the uh, offset error the offset error is verified by putting this to zero if i put this to zero we'll have to zero to the output and the answer is uh, the answer is yes because this is an ideal pump and so you don't have any kind of offset error but if i put if i put a real pump the answer will be no let me run the simulation and uh, you don't have exactly ah well, yes you have zero but you don't in reality you don't have zero trust me you don't have zero you have some like 10 millivolts but you don't have zero well i can close this video for now next lesson i will uh, study the adc and uh, thank you for uh, watching my video see you in the next video see you in the next video guys